Is everyone ready? Yes. Three, two, two one, go. You get all of my trainers. Yeah. I got it with Bruno, so you got it. I got it. Got it. Operation Amphibian is a simulation activity designed to show young children how the Red Cross deals with emergencies. In the simulation, primary school children must work together to respond to a severe flood which has displaced an entire village. But there's another important dimension to the project. Operation Amphibian is a peer-led program, meaning that secondary school pupils guide the primary school children through the entire simulation. This group of 12 Year 8 pupils have volunteered to act as peer educators and run the operation themselves. Keanu. Oscar. George. Montana. Yasmin. Tyra. Kieran. Renu. Sukde. Koji. Kitty. Rana! <laughs> at first, Joe Wharton, who works as a learning mentor at the school, was worried about how his students would cope with this responsibility. When I heard about what to Operation Amphibian entailed and what it, what it was all about, I was hesitant. I thought that if we can't control what they're saying, if we haven't got an adult around all the time, then what kind of message can they be putting across to them? But experience has shown Jill Albert, who designed the project and has run it in many different schools, that even children unaccustomed to responsibility consistently rise to the challenge. Developing skills in those young peer educators is really what the whole of this activity is about. It enables young people um, from all sort of uh, academic abilities to be able to work together as a team and really take part in something that they can be proud of. In the morning, the Red Cross team help the secondary school children prepare for the afternoon when many will have to teach for the first time. So your casualty is going to demonstrate, so what you do is you get the arm and hold it. By the end of the morning, they need to feel confident enough to be able to guide the younger children through Operation Amphibian. This will involve teaching first aid, land mapping, shelter construction and clean water distribution. At first, the students rely heavily on scripts and the adults' support, but they soon get the hang of the exercises. We've like, practiced what everyone's doing and now we're just waiting for the children to come. Now we're actually going to get to do it today. It makes it feel more exciting. Now I'm not really nervous, and because if I mess up, I can just improvise. <laughs> I'm doing make, 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 make them go worldwide. Their preparation complete, the team must now set the stage for Operation Amphibian at their new outdoor location and get ready for the arrival of the primary school children. Past nine. Uh, we've got about 15 to 20 minutes. We're like camels, man. <laughs> there has been a flood. Villagers have been displaced. They must map out the scene of the disaster, dividing the space into two zones separated by a river. Do it that way. Do it. In fact, no. Yeah, do it that way. Each zone must contain a warehouse for equipment and a clean water supply point. This task requires active teamwork and encourages them to show independent initiative, which for some is a new and slightly daunting experience. Shall I put the tent pegs into the room? You just need a hammer for a few more. I know. That's why I'm here. When you tell me what to do, I do it. With the primary school children already on their way and time running out, the site for the refugee camp seems to be ready, but there's still one important thing that they have to do. Have you sorted what roles you've got to do? You haven't sorted the roles either? Are oh. we still in the same group? You, you're in the, you've got to sort... Well, this is all up to you to do now. This is your day. Each activity needs someone to lead it, and it's up to them to decide who that will be. Rene takes the lead and calls everyone together. Could everyone come together for a second? We've just got to see what groups we're in. So, um, who wants to do severe um, yeah. needs and wants assessment in your group? I'm doing first aid. So, who wants to do the introduction in our group? Go on, go in there. Each activity is run by two students, one to introduce it, the other to debrief at the end. With everything finally in place, the primary school children arrive on site. You've got young people to look after now, so go show us how mature you are. 
I'm scared. You're scared? I'm scared. I'm here at the step of the Labour Order team. Okay, well yeah? Yay. My name is Kitty and I'm a member of the Red Cross in this country. Kitty gives the introduction and the briefing for the first activity. What is this? Does anybody know what it is? Bandage. Yeah. Okay. Make sure the bandage is not too tight. Pinch the thumb and it should turn white. Well done. Now, does anybody want to have a go at doing that to each other? Yeah? I'll do it I'll just here. Yours is really neat and good. Oh, it's better than mine. Yeah. 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 You've done a really good job. Yeah. Now we're going to teach you how to do the recovery position. With the knee, you just carefully press it up and put your hand there. But if you don't, it will just fall back down again. You give her a high five and put it on the side of her face there. And then you can call for 999. Peer education is a really untapped resource. Secondary school students are able to learn to take responsibility. The primary school children, not only do they learn what the uh, peer educators are actually teaching them, but they also get to have a friend, somebody that they know in a school that they're going to be going to in the near future. This really stops them from worrying about being bullied. They know that they're going to be somewhere where they're going to get support. And the young people in the secondary school are really happy to provide that support. The next task is to map out the site in preparation for the construction of the refugee camp. They begin by mapping the land, pacing out the area of the site to establish where to construct the new temporary accommodation. George and Tyrell take command of this project. There's been a flood in the place. And imagine if you don't know where everything is. Um, you could hurt yourself, in it? Does anyone know what this is? A compass. A compass. Yes. A um, do you know how to use it? Yeah. yeah. I have to draw a campsite facing north. So if you draw an arrow facing north, and make sure your campsites are facing north. No. So if you put yeah. north, do you know which way north is? If you got your... Yeah, it's there. North is there. Huh? When I done it, it was over there. And you could put a toilet in there or something. Can, no, yeah. if you want to, you can have a toilet box. And, and a PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it needs to near the river? The orientation of the camp established, they must now work together with the other group to bridge the river and reach their vital equipment stored in the warehouse on the other side. Do you think, do you think that's going to be stable or do you think it's going to fall? How about you stay, you stick it on together with some okay, tape? Okay, you want to try now? I've got masking tape as well. One at a time. Okay then. Strong. Put a long one down the middle. There's no point in that, man. You only got to stick it away. You don't want to tuck it away. The teams cross the river to collect the materials they need to construct two temporary shelters. They must assemble a dome tent for living and an improvised structure for holding cooking equipment. For many of the primary school children, this is the first time they have ever put up a tent. What you've got what? is this. You've got one, two, three, six, seven, seven poles, and you will have to mask the tent. Is it coming through? Yeah, it's coming through. Just kind of be careful because yeah, hold the gonna... end. Thank you. Right. So now we've got. Should we do the other one now? So where's the other black pole? We need that I'm going to try and do the other one. Oh yeah, you should get something to stick it together. Is that going to be secure? There's the masking tape. No. This sort of methodology, working with young people, offering them support and training to develop and have ownership of their own project, is something that can be taken into any classroom. Maybe some of them being journalists for the event. You can look at them doing the budgeting and the planning. So I'd look at those. Should we copy them? Once the structures are up, the children collect food and cooking equipment to take back to the shelters before being debriefed by Kiran and Kuljit. Do you think it's quicker to build a house? Or a tent? A tent. A tent. No. No well, you tell, you yes, yeah. better have a house yeah. in a well, tent. Well, you have to, you, if there was a, um, say if there was an earthquake, oh, you know, like a little tremor, your house, the tent would just broke down. What's the difference between a house and a tent? 
Tents are a lot easier to build, you know, in the factory. Yeah, but in the long run, the house will be better because a stable house is more stable. could take years to build. So where would you rather live? House. In the house. In the house. In the final activity, the groups learn how to perform a tracing inquiry to reunite families dispersed by a disaster. The activity is to be interrupted by a surprise incursion designed to test the children's new first aid skills. Oh my god, what's happened? Oh. Do, do you guys know what to do with your Quick, bandages? Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yes. oh, now, why were you leaving them out? So to take the blood, st st the blood oh, still flowing. So this project is owned by the young people. It becomes theirs. By the time they finish, they own it totally. It's something that they have created, they have been part of. And the responsibility for many of them is something that is a really new experience. You guys have learnt a lot of things, haven't you? I think all deserve, everyone all deserve a clap. Well Do you want to come inside? OK, this is for Jasper. Well, I learnt how to um, set up tents and um, how to work together with other people to um, survive in environments not hey, like... Hey, hey, hey. like a flood came, yeah. we would know what to do. If someone had like their hand um, cut, we would know what to do. Get a sling, tie off the bandage. The meters like learn by doing, not by um, like picking up books or something. It's quite not, fun. Not reading, but actually doing it. Yeah. I thought that it would just be like us little kids and then bigger kids showering over us like they've, they've like acted to us that we're like the same as them. The Red Cross and the way the Red Cross put across the message of Operation Amphibian to all of us worked very well. I was really pleased. I felt it went really, really well. I felt that we couldn't have done any more with the children. We had to be more serious because for their parents are sending them to school to get a good, edu good education. So we have to like live up to their expectations. Basically made us think of how we must have been like that in primary school. And we were like in the teacher's shoes who used to be like teaching us and they realised how rude we were. So basically we were getting a taste of our own medicine really. Come to a point and the children realise that they've got to be mature about something. They've got to have a sense of maturity, a sense of responsibility. And I think they've shown that 110%. If we can get the children involved and understanding what is needed for this child-led learning, then we're onto a winner. The children are influenced from us, so yeah. our actions affect on their behaviour. So yeah, because they look up to us. Because as we, even though we're only slightly older than them, we're they're you no know, we're their peer educators. Okay. You learn a lot about people, and you learn a lot about yourself, and how if it's the right group and the right people, then you your communication skills get better, and your leadership skills can get better as well. So you grow as a person, and you make other people grow. Thank you.